Hello, everyone. My name is Yabo. I'm, I'm really glad to be here to present our work about health goal-oriented goal food recommendation. OK, uh, so let's start. Uh, today, I'm going to present it from the five parts, the introduction, problem formulation, approach, results, and conclusion. So let's start with the introduction. Uh, food recommendation is a very popular research and industrial topic in our society. Uh, because it has a high it has a high potential impact on humans physical health and our our task is for force into the who, the whole day's food recommendation so actually there are three types of food recommendation the first one is the first one only consider about users previous food per preferences so it could be either accepted by the user but it's no no helpful for the user's health and the, the second one is the, is which is to try to impose some delta constraints. For example, it controls the caloric range inside a certain range. Yeah, it, it's healthy, but it's hard to. I think it's it's a little bit hard to accept by the user. And the third and the third type of, of the food recommendation is try to balance the preferences and the delta re, and the user's delta re needs. Our 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 research follow forced down into this category. Okay, so the existing approach for the third recommendation uh, the, is uh, first try to get the recommend list, try to get the recommend list from the only based on the user's preferences, do not consider any health constraints, then it, it add a filter to filtering uh, the, the food which not cons which which not satisfied about the health constraints. For example, it would be delete the calorie with it delete the food with the uh, calorie higher than a certain value. So this is the existing approach. And for our approach, we try to combine the user's preferences and the other user's successful story, the similar user's successful story. We, we will explain it in detail later. Okay, so uh, let's move to the problem formulation. We follow the, we follow the previous uh, we follow the previous paper. We for, we format our task as a new task new basket recommendation, and the basket here refers to each days. So we have a bunch of users, we, which we, which they also have a bunch of baskets, and we take the previous baskets and to to predict the the last basket. So we create the whole basket, which means the whole day's food. Then, uh, therefore, the relative uh, position inside the basket is not important. So we, we can say coffee, egg, chocolate. This basket is the same as the chocolate, egg, coffee uh, for, for our task. Okay, then let's talk about, let's see about our approach, uh, start with the data. So our data is a real data collected from a popular weight management app. And uh, the data is from ja January 2016 to December 2016. We also, uh, and the full records are chosen from the uh, 312 food item list. We also done some pre-processing, which makes the the age makes the user's age inside uh, between 18 to 65, and we also want want the user have a continuous record. Uh, after that, the data set has the 15 15 million around 15 million food records and the seven and and uh, seven thousand users. I also extract some data samples from our data set. Uh, we can see in our data set that we, we not only have the food information, but also have user information. Information uh, For food information, we have the item ID and the item name, and also the fancy date. We use the fancy date to separate each basket. Then we also have the calorie for each, each item, the food the food calories for the whole, also the whole disc, the whole disc calories for the whole basket. Now, then all for the user's information, we have the user's current weight, gender, age, BMI, and the global goals, a goal plan. We call it a global goals. Most of the user in our data set wants to lose weight. 
now let's figure out the the housing house factors the important house factors we want to input to our we want to come uh, incorporate it to our experiments. So first, the most important one should be food calorie. We all know it's it's important to consume food that provide enough but not too much calories. Yeah. And the second one is body mass index index, which is used to measure the body fat according to users weight and height. Then we also have uh, the third factor called intent, which could be evaluated by the user's global goal or also use as a real weight outcome. We're going to compare them later. Okay, so let's say BMI group first. According to the BMI classification uh, defined by House Canada, we have uh, six groups, six BMI groups, but to simplify it, our, our, our experiment incorporates all the obese classes. So we, we're gonna, so we have four groups, four BMI groups, uh, underweight, normal weight, overweight, and obese. As we can say, for underweight, underweight group users, there are only 39 users. We, uh, it's, it's way more less than the other users. So underweight users is not considered in our future experiments. Then let's talk about intent. So we have a goal plan and the real weight outcome. So for goal plan, which is recorded by user who when they register into this app, most of the time it doesn't change from beginning to end. And we also have a real weight outcome, which is recorded by the user when their weight changes. Uh, it's 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 always shows lots of fluctuation, and 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 we can see this two part is not is is not consistent at. At, at, at all the time. I plot users with three different global goals. Uh, we can say, for example, for the decreased user, it, the user actually lose weight uh, from beginning to end, but, but it with lots of fluctuations, which means ups and downs. So uh, we can see global goals is not always consistent with their real weight outcomes. So if we impose, if we're imposing food selection according to the global intent, it would make the food choice very different from the user eating habit, and it would be easier easily refused by the user. So uh, the real weight outcome was cho was chosen as the intent factor in the future experiments. Okay, so now we're gonna have the intent groups. We segment the behavior data into different period of time to the increase, maintenance, decrease groups. Um, we also call these periods of good examples. For example, we have a user uh, who is obese and uh, and he wants to lose weight. Then our model not our model consider our model first consider the the preferences, which is trained by the user's historical data, and also consider the general pattern, the general pattern. Which was trained, which was learned by all by the all by all users' historical data. Our model also considers good examples, uh, which is the successful story of a similar user. Which means the similar user, the similar user means uh, the same same BMI, BMI group user, which is obese, and the successful story means um, the obese user actually lose weight. So this data was trained with was called called good examples to train by our model and recommend to the user. Now we have BMI and intent groups, then we can segment intent subgroups within each BMI groups. Then we trained the goal-oriented model specified for every BMI groups. For example, we have the obese group, obese BMI group, then we separate it to obese people who want to increase weight, obese people who want to maintain maintain weight and obese people who want to decrease weight and for this user for the pre, for, for, for this example this is obese people want to lose weight so this part this, this data was treated as a good example for him we finish about the bmi intent then we come back to the calories based on different bmi and intent groups we can see the general trade of uh, underweight user consumes less calorie than normal weight user, which is less than uh, overweight and obese. And also for and also for decreased user, they consume less calories than maintenance, than, than increased P 
people. So uh, we can see calorie consumption may be strongly associated with BMI and intent. It would be an important health factor to incorporate into our recommendation. Okay, so let's see our model architecture. Our model is called the Health Factor Aware Hierarchical Food Recomm Recommender, HHFR. And HHFR utilizes a hierarchical RNN to model user sequential behavior over time and also incorporate health information, which is calorie here. Uh, our model have, have, have three modules, the joint item modeling, intro basket modeling, and inter basket modeling. Okay, let's see the joint item modeling first. The joint item embedding was it's a concat of item embed repre representation with the calorie representation. And for the item representation, we adopt the pre-trained global word vector. Uh, for calorie representation, because it's a numerical value, inspired by the position in encoding in transformer, we propose the transformer function to map the calorie value into the embedding vectors. Transformation function should follow two requirements. Firstly, it's order preserving. And second, it's non periodistic. We don't want to get the same embedding vectors of the different of the different calorie value. Therefore, the 10H with some translation and stretching is chosen as our transformation function. Then the next the next module is the in item level intro basket modeling which is used to model uh, the interactions between each item within a basket. And there's another layer is the basket level LSTM. We call this inter-basket modeling. It models the interactions between each basket. Then we're going to have the score for all, uh, all item, then do the recommendation. Okay, so we also we also explore the model combination uh, approach, approach in our work. Based on the previous groups, we have a uh, we have four different models. So first is the general model, which is a general which which is a general model trained for all the mixed mixed user data. Uh, it could be ca captured the more general eating patterns of all the users. And the second is BMI model. It's trained for each BMI group, and we also have intent model. It's trained for intent group. Then. We also have a BMI plus intent model, uh, which is trained for the subgroups like normal increase or obese decrease. There are two comb combination methods. First, we, we first is two model combination. Uh, we have a hyperparameter alpha to, to recalculate the score of BMI or intent with the score of BMI plus intent model. Now get a new score to do the recommendation. And the next is the three model combining. So we have two hyperparameters, alpha and the beta, to control the general model, BMI model, and the BMI plus intent model. Then we're going to have a question. Does the combination model make better prediction for a user with some intent than the general model? Let's see the statistic of our data set first. We follow the previous paper, take the last basket of each user as a training set and the alternate basket of each user as a validated set, and the, the, the remaining basket was treated as the training set. Now we have the results. Our experiments were evaluated by our precision and NDCG at 10. So let's figure out the impact of the health factors. So, so for the intent, we can compare, compile the uh, intent model with a general model. We can say intent is the performance of the intent is higher than general. And also we, we compare BMI plus intent model with the BMI model. We can say it's also higher than BMI model. So which means there are some similar eating patterns inside each intent group, and it could be captured by the intent model. So let's say about BMI. We can say uh, BMI, the performance of BMI is not only higher than the general model, it, it is all, but also higher than intent model, which means, which means BMI could be, is, which means BMI is more important factors than intent on food recommendation. Let's see the impact of model combination. So we can see three model combination is better than two model combination, which is also better than individual models. Um, even BMI plus intent model can capture the specific eating pattern of a subgroup of a user. 
it, but it may suffer from the poor, poor coverage as the training data is way more less than general model. So model combination, it could be a possible solution to address the data severity problem. Let's check the impact of the combination factors, which is alpha, alpha here. Um, the leftmost points correspond to use BMI model only, and the rightmost point means we use BMI plus intent model only. Uh, we can see the best society is trying to balance both models, which means all combined model contributes in the recommendation. Okay, so that's all our experiments. Let's move to the conclusion. Uh, so first we propose a novel food recommendation for weight management. It considers health factors, which are calorie and BMI. And then we also follow intent period. We also call it it's like good examples to produce intended outcome. Then we also explore the model combination approaches and the proof is efficient in our in, in our experiments. We can see by following good examples, our, our recommendation could guide users smoothly toward to the intent goal we are trying to keep users' preferences at all their time. That's all I got to share today. Thank you so much.